Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home an auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. Blog Talk Radio. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sunny D. Welcome to tonight's show. Guys, you want to say hi? What's going on, good people? It's your boy, Clint. You already know what it is. Ready to get to it. What up, dog? It's your boy, Willie Styles. What's good, good people? Yes, yes. We got a great show topic for y'all tonight. If you've attended for the last two weeks, y'all know what we're going to talk about. But if you're listening right now, you're on blogtalkradio.com forward slash GFT radio show. Definitely copy our merch. Um, Clint, I saw you. I'm like, all right, and I need to get like him with the merch. But go to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash GFT radio. Copy our merchandise. Rock it and let us know y'all, y'all liking what we're doing and y'all appreciate the podcast and y'all, most importantly, support us. Definitely, definitely, right. definitely. Yes. Support the merch. Come high ladders. Uh, before yes, we start yes. the show, I want to, uh, you know, uh, Sunday, I'm sorry to be a little downer. Uh, I didn't, well, this past week, uh, I lost my godson. Oh, yeah. Sunday. Uh, Pass, he drowned. Yes. Uh, he drowned. I didn't find out till a couple of days later. I, I, I was uh, going to tell you about that, too. You know, I didn't, you know, I stay off social media as much as possible, and I'm not on, uh, I don't read the local newspaper, so I didn't even hear what happened. I I didn't expect to hear, you know, when a parent going through something like that, you know, they ain't trying to contact nobody, so I really didn't expect to hear from her. But somehow it came across me a couple of days afterwards. So I just want to send my love out to the uh, Funches and Weller family. Uh, that was actually uh, our former co-host, uh, Red Kenya. That's her, actually her nephew. So our love, condolences, and, and uh, prayers go out to her in this hard time. So I just wanted to show, show them some love, give them some big ups, you know, let them know actually, that we're um, thinking somebody, about them. Yeah, somebody actually um, started a GoFundMe page to help out with um, with everything and just, like, you know, just try to support um, the family. So I'm actually – I actually was looking for the link all day so I can share it on our um, podcast because if you feel, the, feel it in your heart to give and help out, definitely do that. Definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely. Man. Yeah, my condolences to them, man. That's hard, man. Yeah, yeah you know, I, and, and my, I, was, I was telling family members, I was uh, reaching out to, you know, the loved ones out there, and especially with me, you know, as people listening, you know, I was in the hospital for a few weeks myself uh, in January, and, you know, time is short mm-hmm. on this earth, Tomorrow isn't promised. Uh, so if you got loved ones out there that you haven't talked to in a while, make sure you reach out, check on them. You know, everything could be okay, but still just check on them. Keep in touch. And if, if, if there's any, you have issues with anybody and it's trivial or petty, man, let that thing go. You feel me? And, and move forward positively with love because you never know what tomorrow holds. You know, exactly. last time you see somebody can really be the last time you've seen somebody. You know what I mean? You don't want it to really be like that, to be on the downer. So, you know, reach out, show some love, receive some love. And, you know, that's all yeah, I have to say. Yeah, um, I just want to say that my nephew and him, like, they used to always hang together. Um, she actually lived across the hall from my mom. And her son used to be at my mom's house with my nephew and, and the girls. So when they found out, it, they took it pretty hard too. So and you just never, you just never know. And you, it's unexpected and stuff like that. And it's, this is sad to know, to know somebody that lost and losing their child. Like you know, like we always say, you you expect to, you expect your kids to bury you, not the other way around. So I know, 
Like, there's no words that we, anybody can say to comfort her because, you know. Nah, I don't know. It was, it, 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 it was, <clears throat> you know, like I was, when I was, when I spoke to Red, I know, I told her, it was like, you know, it ain't no words. And I just want to let you know I'm here for you. You feel me? You can't really, you feel me, console somebody in that point. You feel me? All you can be there is just let them know you're there. You know, I finally got around there today. I didn't get a chance to see her, but I seen her mother and her sisters. And, you know, it's, 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 it's rough. And, you know, I try to, you can't put yourself in her shoes or any parent's shoes that's lost a child if you never lost one. All you can do is just love your child harder, you know, and, and you know, just hope that you don't have to experience the same thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, nothing's promised. So that's why my, my, my advice is to love harder. Just to love harder. Exactly. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I just shared it to the Facebook page. So um, for those listeners out there, if this story touched you, um, definitely go onto that um, onto our page, GFT Radio, and the the link is there. So um, it's it's throughout social media. But if you don't know them personally, you don't you're not able to see it. You can go right there and get to that link and go right to that GoFundMe page and support. Um, apparently, the, it was started by a close family friend that's like or a family member that's really trying to help them during this time. So definitely um, worth that. I know I make my I've been making my donation. I get paid tomorrow. I'm doing my donation tomorrow. So Please, we wouldn't ask you to do something that we're not going to do ourselves. So. Exactly. Right. Sure. Exactly. All right. Let's get to it. Let's get to the show. Yes. Um. Who came up with this topic? I'm like thrown off real quick. Who came up with this topic? Willie. It was Willie, right? Uh, oh yeah. yeah that's yeah, why. We, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. Everything. That's why we ended up pushing it out. Pushing out a week, so I was uh, a little uh, preoccupied last week with work and all that good stuff. Um, basically, I was uh, searching through one of my uh, uh, followers or, or vice versa. I follow them uh, as uh, IG Live or something like that, and they posted a thing that mentioned about um, discussing politics and um, politics and religion. Um, let me read what the thing said real quick. Uh, so basically, it said, being taught to avoid talking about politics and religion has led to a lack of understanding of politics and religion. What we should, what we should have been taught was how to have a civil conversation about a difficult topic. So, so when I read that, I was, I was like, you know what, I, I, I definitely feel them on the second part in terms of knowing how to how to have a conversation about a difficult topic because that's, you know, that's definitely something or a reason why we usually don't discuss politics and we usually don't, not us, but, you know, people in general don't discuss politics and then people in general don't discuss religion. It's because folks normally get so worked up, so riled up about the things that they have passion in and, um, you know, their their point about the about the understanding of it, you know, I was like that's debatable, but I think that definitely, you know, being able to have good conversations about hard topics, it does bring some awareness, does bring some understanding. So so I guess I can support that that statement, but it made me start thinking about all the other things that we have a hard time talking about and all the other, you know, topics and and and, and a subject matter that goes out there, that goes on out there, and people have a hard time to discuss with friends, with family, with coworkers, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, so you know, I so I, you know, definitely wanted to discuss that with you guys, them to chop it up with the with the, with, with the cast mates, and then see what the folks outside out there in the world, you know, what they think about it. Um, I think we threw a, a couple of different things out there on the on the uh, on the outline, you know. So definitely want to get started, I guess, with just the the, the first one, which is, you know, what brought this topic up was politics and religion. Um, you know, I, I guess the, the, the big question here is can we learn how to, how to discuss things like politics and religion with people without making it be a big blow up? <laughs> Do you think we can actually teach people that? Uh, well, 
it, it goes back to the uh, second part that you were talking about as learning how to have civil conversation. And mm-hmm. when you learn how to have a civil conversation and also go into the conversation with an open mind and an understanding that coming out of the conversation that you two still or group may may still disagree, but y'all can agree to disagree and come to some common ground and respect. You know, it's a, it's, it's a level of respect you have to have within the conversation, the civility of the conversation. The conversation has to be civil. You feel me? You don't necessarily always have to agree or come to an agreement at the end of a conversation. The problem is when we talk about religion and politics, you know, common sense, uh, you know, it sometimes can throw it out the window because there's so much emotion. You know, when you talk about religion, people are moving on faith. So it's hard to it's it's hard to have a conversation with somebody who who's telling you what they believe and what they have faith in. You know, no matter what kind of truth you may bring, if if they don't want to hear it, they're going to reject you and they and they may lash out. So sometimes the conversation doesn't even be fruitful. It's not even worth having. You know, that's why I kind of like I kind of like my friends I have because we're all different. You know, we believe in different things, different uh, from religion and politics. So, you know, we can have a heated debate, you know, and still, you know, because we know how to converse with, cause so, like I always say with relationships, because we're talking about friendships, you have to know how to communicate. You should know how to communicate with your friend, just like you should know how to communicate with your with your mate. So you should know what buttons to push and not to push within the conversation. So if you're having a conversation that you know is going to be heated, that you know there's going to be a lot of back and forth, you should know, you know, what tone to speak in or, you know what I mean, what what buttons not to push. You understand? Because if if me and Sonny, you know, we got a good relationship, but if I go too far, it's a problem. You know what I mean? If, I, if I'm trying to impose my beliefs and my thoughts, because, you know, on her, that becomes a problem because now I'm not trying to hear her. All I'm, I'm trying to dominate her. You feel me? And, and, and the same if it was me and you talking about politics. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to hear it. It's my way or the highway. That's not a that's not a fruitful right. conversation. You know what I mean? We're not going nowhere. You understand? So, it, it like, it's hard to have those conversations with with people with fair weather friends, I should say, you know what I mean. Your close, your closest friends, you should be able to have those difficult conversations with, because y'all already understand each other. You already know, okay. no matter how much you disagree, it's still, it's still not just a mutual respect. It's still a love there. It's still a bond there that goes beyond all of that nonsense. You feel me? Just because you feel me, but it also can go to a point to where. Uh, you, you know, you can push friends away So I can understand it to where If you go too far left If you go too far extreme Then I can see people That's close to you kind of shy away Or if you, or you shy away from them Because they don't, they're don't they not understanding your plight If you get what I'm saying Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think it depends on The type of conversation you're having Because for the better part of my life I've dated or had people who had different religious backgrounds than me. As far as, as, as I'm I'm saying it's part of as, as far as religion. Because I've had conversations with people and for me, even when we I was in school, I always had a curiosity of other people's religions. And I think that the type of like it's not the conversation itself, it's how you have that com it's like how you have that conversation because at work I um there's a young lady who's um she is what is she, our our oh jeez what is she jeez I'm forgetting what she is Albanian and they she she's Albanian and her Albanian people are um are her side of family and so they have two different religions she's raised as a Muslim but it's a little bit you know it's some differences than um than than the Muslims that I know that are Muslims 
so me and her had, had a conversation, and it was like, it was like, so what do you believe? And we had a conversation. It wasn't like I was telling her to believe what I believe or her trying to get me to believe what what she what um what she believed. It was just a mutual respect and conversation. So what do you believe? Well, I believe this, 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 and this. And it was funny because we were having this conversation at work, which you're not supposed to have, but we were. And a coworker who was raised as a Catholic was upset, like upset, upset, like complete disdain, so mad, and then basically wanted to shut the whole conversation down. And but and like it it was it was just interesting because it's like we were having a respectable conversation. It wasn't that you know sometimes you're getting them those those, those debates where you know. They're, at that point, that that person is trying to get you to believe what they believe, and they they're not understanding that you're just not going to believe what they believe because you believe whatever you believe. It was just a respectable conversation about this is what I believe. Oh, that's interesting because here's what I believe, and then we and I and I always and I always crack up because initially, like in to some extent, we're reading from the same book, kind of sorta. With with Muslim faith, it's, a, it's another right. book too, but they're but like we're kind of reading the same thing. And everybody's taken from it different different things. So I just I always find that interesting with any religion that's like if we're talking about like what we're reading, like as far as the Bible or, you know, the Quran and other people have their own different um things going on. So it's I I like those different conversations. But I'm I'm I have yet to have a conversation where I'm trying to get somebody to believe what I believe. I just wanna know what you believe and we can have that conversation and I'll probably find it interesting, like, Oh, okay. But politics is a whole other ball game. Politics will have you the debating whether or not you're gonna still be somebody's friend. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I mean I, I I agree. I Oh no, no problem. No, I was just gonna say that, you know, I definitely agree with both of y'all in terms of especially the religion thing. I definitely agree that, you know, if you go into it understanding and knowing that you're not gonna come away with a with a convert <laughs> and that you know you're gonna, you know, just be Maybe comparing notes, maybe just saying, "Hey, you know, what's what's the difference here? What's the difference there? What's the similarities here? What's the similarities there?" Just trying to learn from each other, right? You know that awareness. Yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, Sunny. You know, I've I've had friends and family members who are different. You know, either different religions or different sects of the same religion, and it's like, you know, trying to learn and understand what 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 what's different about what they do versus what you do. And that kind of stuff, you know, maybe like you say, understand what the similarities are. It, it, it's 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 important to realize that you know when you're having those conversations that it's like you said, it's it's not to bring somebody over to, to to your religion or anything like that. You know, it's it's more of a learning experience for the both of you, and and it, and it should be civil in that regard. You know, uh, definitely um, being able to uh, uh, just learn and, and and get immersed in, in something different. Um, you know, and, and then like what you were talking about, Clint, in terms of the the respect, you know, that and that's the that's the number one thing I I I, I think I I would say is is important to me too, or that's or I think it's important rather is that if you have that respect for the other person's difference of opinion, right? Being able to understand that your 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 opinion can't be pressed upon somebody else to a point where they feel like you know, you're forcing it on them, you know what I mean? And I think that that makes the conversation definitely move a lot smoother because, you know, I know pretty much any time you're talking to somebody, you know, every we all grown, right? So it's like we, we all have our own thoughts, our own our own mindsets. We have our way, the ways we've been, you know, raised or the things we've grown up to, to believe. And nobody's, nobody's going to change that. We have to change it. We have to, to see a different, or I see a, a a a reason to change before we want to change it. It's not that somebody's going to sway us, you know. They they can they can have some influence, but they they're not going to be able to say you change your 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 way of life right now, the way you think and everything. Mm -hmm. That's got to be up to us, you know. We got to want yeah. that, right? And I think that you know when people forget that, that's when things get heated. That's when things get out of hand. Um, like you said in your situation, Sonny, is that you know people start feeling like, you know, oh, we can't trust this because, you know, ain't nobody seeing it my way. You know, it's like, that's that's ridiculous. You know, nobody has to see it your way in order to have a discussion, you know, about exactly. something like that. Exactly. My thing with the politics, you feel me? When you, when, you, when you get down to religion, 
and you see what the difference is in religion, you'll realize a lot of stuff, people with different religions, is very cosmetic. Like, yeah, you have your deeply devouts and, and each religion, but a lot of stuff is kind of, oh, they don't celebrate holidays, or they're not supposed to eat that, or, you know, they fast here, and stuff like that. It's just stuff really people don't want to do. You feel me? Even in their own religion sometimes. So, you know, the reason why a lot of people with different religions a, a lot is just because because the application, <laughs> you know what I mean, how that religion goes about their daily life. Politics, see, with p- politics, I guess, it affects everybody, even those who aren't religious, to mm-hmm. those who are religious. You feel me? Because politics rules our everyday life, whether we want, you know, I hear, you know, my grandma say she, all the time, you know what I mean, she lived by, uh, she walked by faith, not by sight, so, you know, she deeply religious, but she firmly understand that, you know, on this earth, on this in this world, you know what I mean, politics run. You feel me? Pay what you pay what you owe to uh, God, but pay what you owe to Caesar as well. Something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, with politics, the reason why I feel like people get so amped up and, 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 and hostile is because it's really affecting your day to day life. You feel me? And the fact that most people really don't understand politics. You feel me? Most people, majority of people, are ignorant. So. You know, going back to the Bible, I believe it's like Ecclesiastes 118. uh, It's like, he that increases knowledge also increases uh, vexation. Vexation. Because the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. And also, the more you learn, you feel me, it's hard to to have conversations with certain people. people. We don't know. You feel me? And and you don't want to come right, across right. as being. You feel me? That's why they say it's always good to be the to be the dumbest person in the room, because when you're the smartest person in the room, it's hard to really relate to everybody else because they don't see the th- things the way you see. So unless you're very skilled at articulating yourself or skilled at commu- got great communication skills, you know, it's hard to get your point across. It's hard to converse with those people. Because they it, it, they won't understand where you're coming from, and if they do understand, it's going to take them a minute. It's going to take them a while. You understand? And with, and with politics, politics ain't no just simple thing. Oh, I feel this way, or like nah, it's so many uh, levels Level. and different branches. Yeah, it's like it's so much to it. It's so it's, it's never that simple. You know, you could just so when you say when somebody be like, all right. You don't like like let's take let's take uh and I'm not I'm not caping for him but let's take Commander Cheeto for instance, okay? <laughs> you know like we know this man probably had been a bigot his whole life, right? Mhm. But right, exactly. if you go by if if you if if, if you just going by religion, see religion going to be like you know forgiving, so to speak, or 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 I mean let God deal with him. You know, now when we talking politics, it's like, hold on, bro. It, it gets tricky because now, even if you don't like him, what if his policies line up with yours? Yeah. You understand? See, now, right, religiously right. and morally, you could be totally against him. That's what I'm trying to get across. You could be totally against him. But now if his policies and his politics line up with yours, now you got a decision to make. You understand? Oh, that tax yeah. cut may really hurt help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you right. right. You know what I mean? Or oh, or oh, that re- prison reform bill, oh, that's really good. But religiously, you know this man is immoral. You know what I mean? He he's the bigot. So now you you got to come you got to come to terms with with, with, you got to make a decision within yourself. So it's hard to have those conversations with people when they don't look at policies when it comes to politics and they're just looking at the person. Yeah. You understand? So so now you have somebody that, oh, I hate I hate him, I hate him. But what is he, what he's doing politically is helping you. You understand? But you're not even giving him the time, no. you know, I'm, and I'm not saying he is. I'm just using him as an example. 
I'm just using him right. as an example. Yeah, yeah, and I, and, and, and I definitely never thought about it like that. Was that you know you can have that crossroads decision, right? Where you're like, do I do I choose politics over religion? Do I choose religion over politics? And some people have that issue, you know. Some people, mm-hmm. some people have that issue of, you know, uh, or it may not even be religion. You know, they may just feel morally, right? They may say, yep. you know, do I do I have to choose my political stance over my moral stance, right? You know, like yeah, you said, it's because a lot, it's a lot of people will probably agree with, like, see, and it's morals and type of you know religion. So if you was raised as a certain religion that, that didn't believe in abortion and all this stuff, like you were all this stuff, and he's on the same page as you, you might, you know, you might lean toward oh, yeah. the stuff that he's doing because you see, and even with all that, the how he, um, I, I'm, no, I don't know him personally, but like I'm, I'm, I'm about the LGBT community and how, you know, like people may be like as much as they're, as much as they're, sh- like not, I don't want to say shoving it because we had this discussion before. As much as they're trying to put it into our daily lives, and even if you don't necessarily agree with it, like if you're a person that just doesn't believe that that's a sin and stuff like that, when when the, when these policies come out, you're looking at all that stuff because that's that's coinciding mm-hmm. with your beliefs and what you were raised upon. And then then you look at it from a standpoint of if you were raised like I was raised in a church where that all that is wrong, but if I am in in in, in, that, in that community, yeah, I'm a fucking kind of way because I'm a part of that community, and now you're telling me that I'm wrong. You know what I'm right, saying? So right. it's, it's I mean, a conflict it's, with it's, yourself. It's a conflict to right. everything. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing is, you know, like I've had that conversation with some of my friends who are you know Republican leaning because they feel like the the what do they call it the conservative viewpoint aligns with their religious viewpoints mm-hmm. to the point of, you know, it makes them vote a certain way. It makes them have political leanings a certain way. And one of my buddies, he's like, hey, you know, I'm I'm supporting Trump. I'm supporting the Republicans, I'm supporting anything they're talking about because my religion says this stuff is the way to go, you know. And so for him, you know, for me and him to have a conversation, we definitely can't d- discuss Politics. We may be able to discuss religion because we both share a similar religion, but we don't we don't share similar political viewpoints. And we and 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 my my moral stance overtakes my uh, political stance. You know what I mean? My I, I look at the big picture. I'm like, you know, I understand y'all y'all agree with uh, uh, or y'all I understand that y'all you know. Uh, uh, have this conservative thing, and y'all believe this, this, and this when it comes to you know, and and then and the religion that I that I belong to says the same thing. But m- morally, for me, I can't go that way because I'm like, some of that stuff doesn't is not is not the church's business, right? And so I feel like I can't lean that way because the people who represent that area they also are immoral. So it's like I, you know, mm-hmm. I can't put them all in the same bucket and say it's okay because. They, they, you know, they're raising hands to God, and 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 that makes them okay. I can't look at it that way. I have to look at it like, hey, you know what? They they're they're saying one thing and doing another, or they believe they they they're pushing one political agenda, but their religious agenda is completely out of whack. Or 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 like in Trump's situation, he's supporting Republicans out of necessity, but his his exactly. moral his moral uh 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 his moral it's all, his morals are all screwed up, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I can't I can't support him just because he's supporting something that may be considered okay by others. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I think you know, uh, and, and those conversations always get heated because, you know, we we discuss stuff like that, you know. And I'm like, hey, you wanna you wanna vote for a man who? I mean, because my 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 buddy, he's half. Um, I don't know if he's half. What part of Latin, you know, like South, he, his people's from South America, but I don't know what part. But all I know is he's so he's Latino, right? He's half Latino, half black. And I'm like, if Donald Trump saw you right now, he wouldn't. He he. I mean, you know, if he was, he, he wouldn't do nothing for you. He not he not here for you. He's not. He's mm-hmm. trying to send half your people away and trying to lock up the rest of your people. So 
you know, I'm like, I, I don't I don't see why you want to support him. But he's like, he don't see why I don't want to support him when, you know, he sees it as supporting the moral right, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's it's a debate that's never ending, you know. And and the thing is, is, you know, some, somebody's got to keep a level head in a conversation like that because it can become a, 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 a shouting match. It can become, you know, I mean, you, you, you hear the people getting into name calling, you know, people, you know, disparaging the, the candidates that they're going for or the, the, the political groups that they're going for, all that kind of stuff. And it, it, gets, it gets super heated because they get passionate I, about this stuff. I actually seen people and, and you know, like going back to Obama, you feel me? I'm an independent when it comes to politics. I'm an independent. I never, I, me, like I, we, we had this discussion plenty of times. As the first time I went voting and felt like an idiot because I didn't know who I was voting for, I always said whoever I vote for going to be what I want, my issues, personally. So I can never just be a, a Democrat or Republican or Libertarian or, or whatever. So when it comes to, when it came to Obama, I didn't look at him as like old, like a lot of black people looked at him as like for some reason his savior or you know what I mean. Uh, uh, he represents all black people. I didn't look at him like yeah, I looked at him as a politician. <laughs> like he was the black. Uh, yeah, black yeah, the black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You feel me? I just looked at him as a politician. I say the cosmetic value of it is he's letting little black boys and girls know that it's possible to reach that position. That's the only good thing for me that he did as far as, like, you know what I mean, politics, policies and all that. You feel me? I was, me and him was, I was at odds with him a lot. You see what I'm saying? So when when when, when people who see me question him or other people question him, you know, they first thing to, to, to do was attack, attack. You know what I mean? Call call you what they want to call you a coon or or Uncle Tom using that phrase wrong or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. because just because you don't agree with the masses. So not agreeing with the masses and and, fight, and being a sheep, that's how I call it. You know, they attacked you for not going with Obama. You know what I mean? Now when we talk about like you talking about how immoral uh Captain Cheeto is, Commander Cheeto is. And, like, we all know he really don't rock with the Republicans. And now we got to go to this crossroads that, that we were speaking about, or am I voting morally or religiously? Because most conservatives really sh- should have nothing to do with, and when I'm talking about conservatives, I'm talking about Republicans, have nothing to do with or believe in nothing that Trump believes in. You feel me? If they're sticking to how they, uh, you know, to their tagline. You know what I mean? But for some reason, they voted for him in their best interest politically. Now you see the divide within the Republican Party. You feel me? You see people, Republicans, going at each other now, just like how Democrats always. Now you see Republicans doing it because now you have to pick a side. And that's what politics does, does to you. You have to pick a side. You know what I mean? You have to pick a side. With religion, I always try to get across to people, like Sonny said earlier, if you read these books, the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, if those are, the, we talk about those religions, Jews, uh, Christians, Muslims, got, y'all talking about the same God. Thing it's different is your story. Yeah, y'all talking about yeah. the same <laughs> God, the same inception. Like, y'all just, you know what I mean? Y'all story just different. You feel me? So to me, it's like, you know, when they were talking about old oh, war Islam or war Christian, like that ain't got nothing to do with religion. They just using that as a smoke screen. You feel me? That's that's all power driven. You understand? If you really get to the question, it should be. It really should be no fighting over, you know, killing each other over religion, so to speak. It most of it is the way of life, and when you talk about way of life, you're really talking about politics. That's just how yeah. I see it. That's just how you know, I feel. that they right. all believe like if you if you if you understand that there's a higher power that goes by many names, no matter what you call it, if you believe in a higher power. 
Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So it's no point in that. Yeah, but that's the thing. People people get so twisted up in that. Thinking like, oh, you know, my religion is the right religion, my way is the right way, and all that kind of stuff. They don't see that similarity. They don't see that, you know, that aspect of it. That that it's, you know, that it's basically, you know, a, a different viewpoint or a different way of approaching the same basic principles. Really, you know, when you think about it, it's principles. It's all principles. It's all morals and principles. Things that 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 you know we need to be taught in order to have good lives. And be good people, you know, and, and 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 different viewpoints on how to approach that, you know. When, really, when you think really about, speaking, not everybody is living to 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 how every all these religions like every like we we're, we're <laughs> all true that, true that. we're all sinners. We're all not living that 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 life. So, like as far as our religion religion and what we believe in. Like, if you want to take a look at yourself, you're not living how you're supposed to be living. So when you're Got preaching this stuff to you, you have to realize that we're all imperfect. We're all mis- making mistakes. The only thing you can do is be the best person you can be. Everybody's yeah. flawed. Like, I don't even tell people. Most people don't even. Technically, y'all, I'm a Muslim, for the honest with you. If we want to get to religion, I took my Shahada, all of that. I did all of that. You feel me? You know, unless you really know me, unless you're close to me, you don't know that. And I'm not, and nor do I ever go around pumping my chest or sticking my chest out about it. Because guess what? What Tony just said, we're not living the court. You feel me? All right. To, to, you know, I, mean, I, I know, you know, what I mean, I wasn't every living last, the court. Every last doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So exactly, like, we all we all will be stoned to death and probably dead. Exactly. So <laughs> death, right. Not, Maybe exactly. stole, they stole me twice by now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd have been dead as a kid. You know that. what I'm saying? I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> what? They would have got me out of here. They would have got me out of here. No. Early. Half these kids <laughs> right. would have made it. Half exactly. these kids would have made it. It says, honor thy mother and thy father. Nobody does that. We all, we right. all was talking shit. We would have been dead. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Because people... People people want to be holier than thou when it's convenient. You know that's the thing. It's, it's, it's always when it's convenient. When, when it's when it's, the, it's it's their turn to put their head up and their nose up. It's that's you know, and, and it's sad. You know I think it's sad, but that's you know that's life. You know, and I think people people definitely have to have to learn how to take a step back, realize that we all, like you said, Sonny, and it, well, all, all of us are saying it. You know that we all human. We all human. We all have mistakes that we made. We all have done things, you know, against something, you know, if it was something that our parents told us not to do, something our religious told, religion told us not to do. There's some people that go against their, their political views, you know what I mean? Not, nobody's doing anything per doctrine anywhere, you know, not 100%. And if you are, you're probably crazy. So <laughs> not, unless you're, not, not, unless, not unless you're a nun and or, they're not or a even living right. And they, and they not even living right. They probably not living right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I just find, 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 find an article about the, about the nuns being sex slaves. Like, bro, what's, exactly. what's, what's, what's really going on? What's really going on? So, you know, but, you know, I think that, I think that um, you know, first step is, is, is respect, mutual respect. Second step is, you know, keeping that cool head and, and, walk, and knowing that you're walking away just with understanding, you know, just with understanding with with feeling like, you know, you can learn something from 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 your brother or your sister that you're talking to and and and, and be at peace with that, you know, and not that you gotta change somebody's mind or affect some change on somebody when, you know, they have to be the ones to accept that. You know, we we we've learned that too many times in too many you know, situations is that nobody nobody's gonna change just because you say it's a good idea to change. It's just not going to Yeah, I'm going to give out the number because I didn't do it earlier, but it's 657-383-1155. If you find yourself listening to this conversation and you want to chime in and share your thoughts, definitely call in again, 657-383-1155. If you're on Twitter, at GST underscore radio. Yeah, I I, I think, and, it's, and it, you know what's crazy? I remember being in, um, when, I got, when I got kicked out of high school because I was a heathen, and I went to the alternative mm-hmm. school. Um, being in our history class and we were talking about religion, 
And I, I had the same conversation I have with people now, like, and I just, I was talking to them, and I and I said the same thing I said on this podcast. Like, I don't understand how we're all reading from the same manuscript, whether it differs in whatever, however it differs. It says the same exact thing, but we got all these different religions out of it. And it, it's just, it's just, it's like, as, and I, I'm a person that loves history. Like, I love history. I, I love history, and I love silence. I can just watch stuff like that and be all engulfed in it and then just all up into it. But... It's just, it, it, it amazes me. It, it, it's just mind-boggling me. And like I said, I'm for me personally, growing up Christian, I just, a lot of stuff that I was taught, I just don't believe. Like, I like mm-hmm. even before I knew that I was a part of the LGBT community, I just felt like people were born that way. Because who chooses to live a life where they don't, they're trying to figure out why they are different from everyone else and then have to deal with the things they have to deal with, you know? So that's like being born a minority. You don't get to choose that. It just happens, and you have to live that life, um, and you that's, that's what it is for you. So and as much as I was raised upon and, and grew up in, in church and knew that that was a sin, you, you, it, it was an issue, like, and I, like, that was instilled in me since, since I was born to church. And then to come into my own self and identify as I identify, and it's like, wow, but at the end of the day, I know that God is in my life because I've been through a lot of stuff, and without him, I don't know how I will be here for a lot of it. And even continuously in my life, and at the end of the day, like, I'm not always in church all the time. I went this last Sunday, but I, and like, and I haven't went since my mom passed, but, you know, so, so that was my first time going, but, like, it's just, like, for me, I don't, I've never felt like being in the church is going to make my relationship with God stronger. It's just my me believing what I believe. Regardless of mm-hmm. anything, I believe that he's here, and I pray to him, and, you know, I thank him for the things that he's done for me. So for me, that's my relationship with God. I don't have to be in this particular place to, to do that. I'm, I could be at home. I could be wherever I am and still feel the same way. And even though I'm not in church every Sunday and haven't been for quite many years, you can't tell me, like, what I believe, you know? Right, right. It was just still to me. So, so, it's so just, it, it just amazes me how people get so caught up in it because I'm not going to argue with uh, you, um, with Willie, because of your religion. I'm not going to argue with you about your religion. I'm going to respect that that's, that's, that's what you choose to believe. And as a person that gives a crap about you, I'm not going to judge you. That's, whatever you believe, that's what you believe, because at the end of the day, when, when, when on your last day, whatever you go out believing, that's what you go out believing. Right, right. And nothing I can say to you is going to, I mean, I can tell you what I believe, but it's up to you to decide whatever you want, but I'm not going to be, like, beating it. And I don't like people that do that. Don't beat that down my throat, because, like, I don't like that. Like, I'm not, I've never done that. And I used to be in church 20, I was, like, a hardcore Bible thumper for, for many years. And I still that's wasn't, why. like, hey. Be in church mm-hmm. every day. Tell other people. I've never done that. I always, always say, you know what I mean, live and let live. You mm-hmm. feel me? That's, if, if you do that, as long as you're not trying to pray nobody down, uh, kill nobody, uh, and, and, and fringe on somebody's liberties or whatever, you know what I mean? I don't care what religion, you feel me? I don't care what you're doing, to be quite honest with you. You feel me? I don't care. And, and the switch subjects when we talk about race relations, to get into that, I don't care if you're a stone cold racist. You understand me? Actually, I got more respect for the stone cold racist. As long as you stay over there. Yeah, leave me the hell alone. Come around you, come here. Around, you come around if you want to do some business. You feel me? Mm-hmm. We ain't got to like right. each other at all to do business. You feel exactly. me? Exactly. All you gotta like each other. <laughs> All money's green. You understand? Hey, but, but some, you, some people don't. Some people don't choose morals over money. Yeah, and and, and guess yeah. what? I ain't mad at them. You understand? Like, mm-hmm. I'm never mad. I'm I'm you know like when we because when we talk about the civil rights movement, when we talk about the sit-in and all of that, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I understand what they was doing, but in this day and age. I'm like, if my money not welcome there, you don't want I ain't me. Going. 
That's your right. I'm not even mad at you. You understand? Mm-hmm. I'm not even mad. At, I'm not trying to boycott you or nothing. I'm going to take my greenbacks somewhere else. And if I can't find nowhere else, guess what? That means it's an opportunity for me to start that business for those who look like me. To come and not feel like, you know, to not be rejected. You understand? Yeah. I, I'm not. So, so I don't like when it comes to race relations or or, or the race races. Like I really don't have a problem with them. Like I I, I prefer my races loud and upfront. You understand? Know <laughs> <laughs> loud. But, I prefer you know, my races I mean, loud and upfront. Exactly. Exactly. I think exactly. I respect them more. Huh? Yeah, don't yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? I was talking to a, a friend of mine earlier, and, you know, she went from working in the inner city to now she works in the birds and she work around mainly white people. And to her, mm-hmm. she's like, it's weird. She was like, because, you know, white people will be mad at you, but still a smile right in your face. Like, they ain't mad. Like, they could really, you know what I mean, and, like, smile on your face, be nice to you, and then go right in the other room and kick your back in. And she's like, that's not, that's new to her because she's used to, you know, in the inner city, black, Spanish, whatever, they right up front in your face with it if they don't like you. So she's used to that, and she's more comfortable with that. So it said she was like, it's harder to navigate around people who, who's, who conceal their true intentions. You know what I mean? That's why I like my races loud and up front. Be up front with yeah. me. You know what I mean? Be see, up front with me. See, I'm a little different. So I I respected you up front like that, but at the end of the day, you just, like, like I can go back to a conversation I had at work during the Trayvon Martin thing. And then here's my synopsis, and maybe I'm wrong for having this type of synopsis, but when I have conversations with people of other, of other um, races, mainly white, and we talk about situations like that, how they choose to respond and, like, what they say about Zimmerman. And even though Zimmerman wasn't um, – he's not white, right? He was something else. I don't know what the hell he was. He was other shit. But anyway, uh, when they – when any type of situation where it's, like, a race racial issue and it's up front, it's not like we're just playing a race card. It's, like, a general – like, a real live race issue. So when we have these conversations, not that we should have network, but when we do, it's like I listen to how they say things because you like even with the snipers and like oh he's mentally ill like those type of things. It, it, it's a red flag to me, and maybe I'm wrong for this, but it's a red flag for me because then I then I'm then I'm looking at you suspect because now I believe like because I'm not one of the people that believe all white people are racist. Um, maybe I'm wrong for that, but I just don't believe that every white person is racist. Um, but when you when I have this conversation with people and then they and then how that conversation goes, that's when I'm it's depending on how that conversation goes, I it's a red flag to me. Uh-huh. I always say, and it's like, okay, so, so 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 now I'm on notice because because every time we have these type of conversations, you on you on some trying to justify it, and I I can't get with that. Right, right. So so now I'm questioning you because if every time we have these conversations and you trying to justify it, I can't like. So I, I really can't deal with you like that. Like, I'm going to be cordial cause, because we work together, but I can't rock with you like that for real, for real, like, because I don't respect that. Right. I mean, I, I, I kind of feel I kind of feel the same way, you know, when it comes to how I deal with a person after I find out something that, you know, how, how they re, either react or how they uh, approach a certain situation in terms of, you know, if I'm, if I'm discussing something with them and they mention – that they don't like, you know, homosexuals, right? And it's like, it, it's, it's to me, it's one thing if you feel like you don't, you don't like homosexuality as a, as a state of being, uh, or, or, or you don't rock with it because you're like, hey, this is my, this, my religion says this is wrong, blah blah blah. blah. So my thing is, you're not about to sit here and punish all, all homosexual people for being what they feel they should be, right? And because that's, that's your choice. Let them have their choice. I'm not about to sit here and, and argue with you about that choice that they made, and I'm not about to sit here and and and, and demonize people for being people. So you know, 
at that point, it's like, okay, I know now I'll deal with you because I'm not about to sit here and be like, you know, having to justify being being either considered a friend of yours or an associate of yours and, and you piss the people off because you feel like you got to demonize people. And it's like nobody's demonizing you for making the choices that, you're, that you've made, you know, whatever those are, you know. So I think people that, you know, do that or, or like you said, when you're dealing with somebody who's, uh, uh, um, or, or, or another one, like people right now, you know, they enter into bashing um, or, or, or trying to come after people who are from the Middle East and that kind of thing, um, uh, you know, going after uh, Muslims, going after uh, Latinos, going after anybody trying to come, you know, that's, that's trying to uh, immigrate, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, you know, that's that's not acceptable either. You know, it's like we this whole country is built on everybody getting brought over here or sent over here or coming over here, depending on how you look at it. You know, so you know, we we trying to you know, it's one it's one thing to not want to come the the country to be overrun with a bunch of different people who aren't here now. But it's another thing to, to demonize people just because you don't want them here. That's not right. You know, it's like I, I understand there's an immigration concern that it's a lot of people already here that we already have to figure out how to take care of. I understand that. I'm I'm good with 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 that. I'm understanding of that. But the thing is, you're not about to demonize a group of people because you don't want them in your country. That's not right. You know, and and, and I'm not about to sit here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know. I think it's the way people approach things that that turns me off with people, you know, and then how I have to figure out how to deal with them. You know, my ex-wife was kind of like that where it was like she was she was like straight – I guess I shouldn't really talk about her business, but, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, I just – you know, it's just a good example of, you know, how I had to deal with somebody. It was like, you know, it was it – was, and it was hard because I didn't find out until after we were married that how she felt about this certain thing – and um, uh, but it was just like when when it happened, when I found out, it just it really turned me off. You know what I mean? Where it was just like, dang, you know, like you feel like that. It's like I'm like, it's people. You know, these are people we're talking about here. Like you ain't perfect, I ain't perfect. We ain't raising perfect kids. We ain't doing. Ain't nobody doing nothing perfect in this world. So how you how you demonize the people for a choice that they made just because they didn't agree with your choice? You know, exactly. so you can't do that. That's not right, you know. So, you know, I, so go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, to the point when I said I agree with you 100% is, you know, when it, when it, when you talk about racial that raised and demonizing a group of people, you feel me? That's what Captain Cheeto did with, you know, the people from Mexico and South America. That's what mm-hmm. he's doing. Yeah. You feel me? All he, too. Was like, he, he demonized them, calling them from a shithole country. Exactly. All all he really had see, it's, it's so simple. You feel that? And when we go back to having a civil conversation, all he has to say is to get across to the people, like, listen, we're already struggling as a country. We can't keep taking on other people from other countries and, and trying to you know what I mean, take care of them and get them set up right when we when our own people that's already here are struggling. So we need border control. We need immigration control to control that. You know what I mean? To to slow that down. Because we keep can't we can't keep having them come over here in droves at this particular time because we we're not set up right ourselves. You know what I mean? Our infrastructure is failing. You know what I mean? So until we get our infrastructure right we have to take care of us first, you know, and that's and to, and to me, I think that everybody on either side of the aisle, whether you you can respect that, you know what I mean. So when we talk about race, I feel like it's always, you know, what I mean, even if he really don't like them, if you be civil about it, you could actually convert somebody who or uh, to agree with you who was on a fence with you because of the way you was uh, coming. You know what I mean? And with, when it comes to this race, you know who I had the most problems with when, when talking about race? It's other black people. You feel me? Because race relations right, with black right. people is, 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 is the weirdest conversation because 
it's like we're the most divided amongst ourselves. We're the most divided amongst ourselves. It's crazy. Like we, I, we, I we separate. We separate ourselves so much. You know, now you got this thing where you feel me. They're going on Twitter to to the the descendants of American slaves. If, if you're not descendants of American slaves, we don't rock with you. We don't care if you're from the Caribbean or or, or whatever. You're not us. You don't deserve reparation. All right, I can dig that. But now, why are you demonizing them? You feel me? Y'all don't got a, an agenda. You feel me? Like, it, it, politics and race. It's like, uh, if y'all got time, look up Yvette Carnell. Uh, she She's smart as hell. You know what I mean? But she wanted the, uh, the forerunners and, and promoting that, the, the descendants of, of, of American slaves, to where it's like, if you ain't us, I don't care if you from Africa, we not y'all. You know, y'all don't like it. We don't like y'all. Now I mean, so it's like, boom. It's like, how is anybody else going to respect us in the world community when we don't even have that respect amongst ourselves? You feel me? Because then there's another topic I wanted to get to on another show is that propaganda topic to where you got a lot of these black people on these on social media sites or or whatever they promote this pro black agenda, but they only doing it it's self serving. So they'll lie right. to you and tell you lies about our history that it it, it seems it it'll make you feel good, but it's like it's not true. Like I mean, like y'all telling lies just to get people you feel me, I understand you want to create pride in the black community, but you don't have to lie about it. You don't have right. to lie about it. You feel me? And like Sonny mentioned earlier about how white people, not all white people race, I totally agree with you. That's why I always tell people to read the book, The Destruction of Black Civilization. They'll tell you, they'll break it down on how to, you know, from Africa, you know, it's by uh, Chancellor, William Chancellor. You feel me? He breaks it down. And he also states in the book, like within every revolution, be it from, uh, not every revolution, but when, when white, pe- white people helped us, even from Africa to now, it was yeah. white people that, that fought alongside of us. You feel me? They understood their place in the fight, though. You, feel, you know what I mean? They understood. But they, it was always white people helping us. So all white people have never, ever been racist. That's never been true. You know what yeah. I mean? White people were right. slaves before themselves. I mean, right. that's, a, right. that's a story people don't know. Like white people, not only did they enslave themselves, Africans enslaved them as well. Black Africans. Enslaved white people, so you know. Yeah, some we, black Africans stole black slaves. Yeah, exactly. And, and people, and, and that's like, like, and people always say the white man, like that's what. And I, like, I feel like, like, like this when, when we talk about that, and it's like a lot of people get upset about that, and they like, and they said the third, like I'm very aware that it was black people that were free that bought slaves because they were their family members. But we're talking about people who were like, like when you watch. um like when you watch uh, movies, like not necessarily say this is a hundred percent true, but just realistically speaking, when you when you watch Kunta Kinte and you go through that stuff like that, and you see that how that happened and stuff like that, there were black people that had a hand in it. Like they were selling black people to the white man or selling out black people to, to enslave them to the white man. And so when you when when people forget that part of history, like we let's like if we're gonna be Learning our black history, we need to learn it all, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And I think that people people forget that because they so I I, I want to say the word prideful, but that's not the word that I want to get to. That's not the word I want to say. But I feel like we that like they they lose sight of like facts. Right, right. Like it wasn't just they, white men coming to Africa to to tribes, and you know how powerful those tribes were. To come to try they blinded by fake. They yeah. blinded by fake rage. Yeah, so and it's like, it's and like, like, let's be honest. Some, they, we were sold by people yeah. of our country. We were sold to slavery for money to better the community, and it was like the few for the for the many. And unfortunately, that's that's the reality of it. Um, so we're going to be hating the white men as much as we need to be upset with some of these some of our black men that actually, you know. 
And it's like, when, and I want to clarify when I say fake, uh, bonded by fake rage. It's a lot of people, it goes back to the propaganda. That's why it's so hard to uh, have these conversations with a lot of black people because, you know, all they all they want, they, you know, but most people in general, no matter what race, want the easy way easy way out. So the easiest, you know, what I mean, it's easy just to be like, okay, they enslaved us, they uh, uh, segregated us, they they set us up to fail. All right, you're one hundred percent right. You're one hundred percent right. But at some point, you know, what I mean, we don't take we got to be culpable in our actions. We got to take accountability for our actions. You know, it's like we don't we don't want to do that. We, you know, we continue to blame them. It's like at some point we already know what they did. What are we going to do to correct it on our end? You feel me? And keep blaming them and, and telling them they got to fix it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. That's not going to work. You feel me? Fix what they can't fix. You feel me? Let it be known. But for the most part, we got to do for ourselves. And I feel like the fake rage is because people are sc- really scared to do for themselves. You know, we talk about it on this show plenty of times or how de- dependent we are really on the government because we, we, we have we have lost. All of us are slaves now. Don't get it fucked up. White people, too. <laughs> you know, right. Don't get it fucked up. Right. Spanish people, y'all, too. Everybody, Asian people, y'all in this country, the majority of y'all, you feel me? Because only like 1% own the most of the wealth. You feel me? The majority of us, whether you want to admit it or not, you're a slave. You have to go to work. You have to be out here to make money. You feel me? The majority of us don't know how to make our own food. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I mean? We don't know how to really do for ourselves. You know what I mean? Everybody talking about, I'm grown. I'm grown. All right, you grown. All right, let me... Uh, you go grow your apples. Go grow your fruit. Go grow your vegetables. You know what I mean? You grown. Go 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 catch a chicken. You love y'all love chicken. <laughs> go right. catch your own chicken. Right. You feel me? It ain't about right. to be wrapped and packaged for you. You feel me? If we get that, <laughs> then you'll really see who's who and what's what. You know what I mean? But True. you know what I mean? We 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 blinded. You know what I mean? They don't put that. You know what I mean? They sold us a dream. <laughs> Basically, and we're mad that the dream ain't really true. It's not really a dream. And we know that it's not true because we've been here from the beginning, black folk, in this country from the beginning. So it, it frustrates me to have, like, race related, you know what I mean, these conversations with other black people because it's like we're talking in circles. Why are we still having these same conversations? You feel me? Why are we still having these same conversations? Because we should know better. Mm-hmm. We should know better than anybody else. You feel me? anybody else outside of the Native Americans and some of those Native Americans were black themselves. <laughs> you understand? So we all should know better. But when you have these conversations, it's like to me they're fruitless because you know you know it's, it's, they're artificial. Is is no you know it's just a blame game. It's just a blame game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, I'd rather, you know, you listen to other races. I mean, when I went to Dominican Republic and I was at the bar and it was this, uh, I don't know if he was, uh, to be honest, I think he probably was Muslim. He was at the bar, he was drinking, and he was drinking with me. He was like, man, y'all don't know. And I'm like, what you mean? He's like, y'all y'all have no how much there, much power y'all have. You feel me? You could tell this dude had money. You feel me? But he would, for some reason, he just, Sparked up, and I'm like, "Who are you talking about?" I'm like, "I ain't got no goddamn money." <laughs> He's just saying, "What the fuck?" Just calling me, <laughs> feel me, feel me. Then it broke my bank coming over here. What are you talking about? You feel me? You're like, now nah, right. I'm talking about black people. Know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. what? He was like, he was like, y'all don't know how much. Pa-. He was like, it's y'all time. He's like, what are y'all waiting for? He's like, y'all should. You know what I mean? It's y'all time. You feel me? And it is somebody from, you could tell the accent and his voice. And you could tell that somebody done came over from, you know what I mean, one of them countries over there in the Middle East. And, and, and he's telling you in the Middle East, which is Africa. Let me just say Africa. And he's telling you, he, 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 they see it. 
It's like, but we don't see it because we're too busy fighting each other. Too busy fighting each other. Y'all really gotta look up this 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 conversation about the descendants of American slaves. This is the most. I just looked her, I just looked her up. Like, but she's smart as hell. Don't get me wrong. It's just the fact that why of and, and Tariq Nasheed, the one that did the hit of hair and colors. You feel me? I be I be loving the information he be giving him here. But some of that is propaganda too. When you listen to like some of the stuff he be talking himself, it's propaganda. You feel mm-hmm. me? But he also on that uh, descendants of uh, uh, American slaves, African slaves. I mean, like, come on, man. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> like, oh, oh, like, as as we we get to this point, and now we 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 trying to separate us from the core. But for, next is going to be now. Listen, if you ain't if your great great grandma ain't from Mississippi or this side of the Mason Dixon line, we don't. You know what I mean? Like, how, how far y'all going to go? You know what I mean? If she ain't yeah, come yeah. from this part of the Mason Dixon line, we don't acknowledge her as the one of us. Like, how far y'all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's how far. Like that's what we regressing to. Like we supposed to be progressing, but we're regressing. You know what right. I mean? Like we're regressing. Like what are y'all doing? Yeah, that's doing what are y'all doing? Right there. That's doing too much. Doing way too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah like it's man. just. We we might as well go back to to, to to the um to the fucking Willie Lynch like like <laughs> break it up by the colors like the light and dark like y'all doing <laughs> this, this, like y'all doing too much like this is the conflict we we had they want us separated they want us to be against each other and it's just it's toxic cause, and this is and you're gonna reiterate that in a different form yeah like, I don't, me and uh Alex who we used to always call the show. My boy, I, mm-hmm. he used to, me, him, and my boy, Mark, we used to always say, I used to tell him back in the day, you feel me? Because we used to have these type of cases, conversations about black people. It's like, bro, we got to destroy and rebuild. Everybody ain't going to make it. You feel me? For us, the mm-hmm. progress is like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people, like, we just got to let them go and, and do them. They can't be a part of the movement. They can't be a part of uh, the progression of black people because, you know, like at some point, we gonna have to. We gonna have what the white people had. The white people had their own civil war before. They went to war with themselves before. You know what I mean? And at some point, you know, I'm not saying we are gonna be out here. We already killing each other, but I ain't going. I'm not saying an a, a actual physical war, but uh, uh, it's gonna be like a war between the, the those who are being pro, trying to progress. And those who are, who are stagnant or regressive because it, it's getting out of hand, and you feel me? We losing ground on other races now. You feel me? We're like we're losing ground it's to the point now where we little black kids don't even want to be black no more. Right. You feel me? That's like it's you know what I mean? Like people growing up, they don't even want to identify. But I know girls who I grew up with when we was younger. You know what I mean, they love being black, black and proud. Now all of a sudden, oh, I'm I'm half Spanish, I'm mixed, I'm this. It's like wow. It's like what you hate yourself that much? The world t- taught you to hate yourself that much. This is crazy. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, reading and, some and, tweets and everything. Uh, uh, recently, are you looking at? Did you look it up too, Willie? Oh uh, no, I didn't. I didn't look it up yet. Can you read some of the what's some of the tweets that sound crazy that you? Because I ain't even get to my phone, man. Got my other phone. I'm, well, I'm reading the tweet that somebody tweeted, and I guess somebody is that I guess they got mad. So somebody basically said ADOS uh, tribalism is short sighted, ill informed, and politically immature. LOL. Y'all only push this rhetoric on on, on AD, ADOS and. Not your foreign black um, buddies. I wonder why everybody else is allowed to be tribal, but we're so far. Um, we we, we got to be for. Hold on, I gotta read it because now I cut it off. Hold on, and we got to be for everybody. So then, the, I guess they they replied that. Um, hold on, now I'm, I'm, it's too many tweets. God damn it, I keep getting more. But it says yes. No one ever criticized the Africans over their many tribes. Only when we acknowledge differences then it becomes a problem. So they kind of justifying why they 
understand that it's okay to to to, to, to like I guess give this rhetoric of you know these people are are more important than others or whatever. So somebody called them out mm-hmm. on it and they're like, listen, so everybody else can, so Africans, so their justification is Africans had many tribes, so their problem only because they acknowledge the differences. And you see what this what, this conversation, her, Yvette Cardinal, and a, and the guy that started this uh, with her, uh, his, his uh, the, the, uh, the, Twitter. The Antonio, Antonio Moore? Yeah. Yeah, know, I'm reading this too. Yvette, Yvette Cardinal is the most she the more popular one. She used to always, I don't know if y'all know Boyce Watkins. She used to always do some stuff with Boyce Watkins on his channel, on YouTube, but then they had a falling out. And, mm-hmm. you know, because Boyce is more like do for yourself, do for yourself. You know what I mean? Why are we always, you know what I mean? He more of stop being a worker, employee, and create a business. He to create a business, uh, pull mm-hmm. our money together. You know, Yvette more so, you know, like, all right, that's cool, but, you know, the system is so messed up and against us, we got to, uh, she think politically we're going to do it or, or getting reparations. That's what she, that's where she coming from. Like, she she feel like we, we deserve reparations, you know what I mean? So, you know, like her initial, her pen tweet on her thing tells everything. You feel me? This is from 2017. African Americans, and she and she be clear to the state like she talk about African American. If your parents, I mean, if your ancestors was the slaves here, she's not talking about you. Are the only group mm-hmm. worse off than than they were in two thousand? But at least y'all got DACA through, right? Shaking my head, and now we know DACA is about the uh, immigration kids and you the know, immigration, from, right? mm-hmm. the yeah, and all that. exactly. So in her mind. It's like y'all worried about them, and y'all like you know what I mean. Like y'all trying to help them, and and, and don't give a damn about yourself. Now, remember last year, I was always saying my line is drawn. Mm-hmm. So in a what in in a way, I agree with her, but it's, it's for different reasons. Like we can always arrive at the same point, but for different reasons. For me, I felt like you feel me. We not worried about ourselves enough. We should be too busy. Now, I feel like black people always caper for other people so much that we forget about ourselves. And she kind of agreed with that more, but she, like, fuck them other people completely. At least that's where I get from. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, like, fuck them other people completely, but I am, like, y'all can wait a second. (laughs) You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? You go sit over there. Our line is drawn right here. I'm worried about us. I can't fight your fight. Because y'all not coming to fight our fight for us. I don't mind being the leader. You feel me? You can't expect others to do for you what you'll do for them. You know what I mean? That's part of what being a leader is. So, but also, we're going to take care of home first. Take care of the family first. That's how I look at it. So take care of black first, and then we could, all right, boom. Her, it's like, you know, it ain't just black. It's You got to be a specific black. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? That's, that's just, yeah, that's just. I don't like 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 this. It's separate. It's separate. I'm gonna say it wrong. Yeah. Separatism. Separatism. Is that a, that's the yeah. right word? Because I might be making yeah. up words. Like we 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 divide it as it is. Like he's talking about. Like I said, the light skin, dark skin, men and women. Like all this stuff that we have these are like, issues with and. It's it's, it's it's like it's like we we move better we 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 we'll, we'll be better off if we all unite in in in, mm-hmm. in the progression of change to better ourselves as a community. You, you, but she it's, does it's make a good point. Like, huh? She does make a good point, and this is what I go back to with that conversation me Alex and Marcus had about destroying rebel. She does, and I say this all the time: like black people would never want monolithic group, even in Africa. And right here she writes, right. yes, no one ever criticized Africans over their many tribes. It's yeah. only when we acknowledge difference that it becomes a problem. And when she's talking about we, she's talking about us over here. You know what I mean? And which which is a very valid point. Because she's like, right. Right. Y'all, y'all from Africa, y'all getting mad at us. Y'all mad at me from saying we different. 
from y'all. But when we go to y'all countries over there, y'all separate y'all from tribes as, as well. So it's kind of hi- hypocritical of y'all being mad. Y'all come here at me for not want you wanting to accept you in my tribe. You feel me? So now I can see her point there. Do I agree with it? Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think that helps us. You feel me? But I see her point. Mm-hmm. I see her point. I see her point. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think, I, I think the, I think the acknowledgement, or not the acknowledgement, the, the acceptance, or like you said, they're not being hypocritical and realizing that that people want to want to have some kind of distinction, right? You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 I can kind of feel her there. You know, I can kind of feel that. You know. See, every, I look at it like this. Everybody can do what they want at this point. We, we can all make our own, you know, way in this world in terms of how we want to be viewed or how we want to be um, taken. You know, if if they if they want to be if they want to be separate and, and and recognize a certain way, that's one thing. I mean, the whole you know d- division of some kind of reparations or all that kind of stuff. You know, that part. I don't know. I think when it comes to money, people always going to people always going to have an issue. People always going to have arguments. People, I mean, you see it, you see it, you see it with people who are family all the time. When it comes to somebody dies, and now the siblings are arguing over the money, and now the cousins they want in on it too. It's always something, you know. No matter what it is, when 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 money gets on the table, people going to argue. Um, but you know, if if it's if it's clear, I mean, if it's purely just the distinctions and it's just the way they want to be taken then I'm I don't see what the problem is if you if you because everybody everybody has their own way of you know of, of doing their own thing you know you got people who you know we, we, we call we call them the, the 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 woke folks and you got the people who who are you know the pan-africans you got the people who are you know it's so many different things that people want to be right so I mean I'm not about to argue with somebody about them wanting to be, you know, uh, 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 what you what you call it again, American descendant of slaves, you know, or African American descendant of slaves, whatever you want and to call only, it, you know. Only reason why only reason why I brought that up is because she want to make that distinction. Him and her, him, her and Antonio Moore want to make that distinction because of reparations. So right. if we get reparations, and, and, and that, reparations come yeah, come and that's out. Yeah, I said I. I, I I, I think I think that that's the only reason it's it's going to be a problem, or that mm-hmm. the, you know I, I think I'm pretty sure it's going to be a problem because if if somehow there's money on the table, everybody's going to want a way to maximize their peace, right? Exactly. You know, which is which is which is you know what, what what's crazy to me about that though is there's no reparations on the table. <laughs> <laughs> there's no reparations on the table. Nobody's offered us reparations. Why everybody keep asking for repar or not asking? Keep, keeps bringing up we deserve reparations. That's fine. Yeah, I understand. I, I feel y'all one hundred percent. As soon as y'all find somebody crazy enough to 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 go against not only the white people but just people in general, because apparently mm-hmm. there's a lot of black people who do feel like we don't deserve reparations either. Like you said, Clint, we got so many divisions <laughs> even in our own race. Cause there's a there's a, there's a whole group of black people who will tell you hell to the fuck no you're not getting reparations <laughs> not for my not for my tax money you know exactly so, it, you exactly. know so that's the you tax now you ain't getting no reparations from that shit <laughs> exactly so you know my thing is 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 you know all these moot points that people like to argue just kills me it kills me but you know once again. You know, hey, that's their belief. That's their they believe that they're gonna one day affect change and get some reparations. And, and when it comes mm-hmm. down to it, they want to make sure they get the maximum piece of the pie. <laughs> so I'll yeah, let them dream. I'll let them, you know, go for it. <laughs> that's why. Like if, they figure, if they figure it out, I want my piece too. You know? <laughs> yeah, but that's why we say we, we, we go back to this to the crux of this conversation about having these losing friends. That, that's why sometimes it's just good just to be quiet. That the wise yeah. re- rarely rarely speak. You feel me? That don't mean you're dumb. That don't mean that sometimes it's good not to say nothing. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it's just good just to keep your mouth shut. And what's the other saying? Uh, from a distance, you know, see who arguing. You can't tell who is who from the fool. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't tell yeah, who right. is who mm-hmm. from the distance. 
Now me, so my best thing is to keep quiet. Is to keep quiet and just put the work in, do what you got to do, because these conversations will lead to animosity amongst people who you think you're close with. You know, it, like it, it is. It's weird. It's weird, but it, it's true. You know what I mean? It, it's true. You know when people really, and then it also lets you know how like how how well you don't know somebody these conversations as well. And when you let people speak, you know, you'll realize how, like, you really don't know somebody that well as much as you, like you said, you was married, really, and you mm-hmm. didn't know that, you know, like, it, it bees that way. It bees that way. So right. you got to think, you know what I mean? You don't see your friends every day. You don't, with some of these people you have in these conferences, you don't be around, like, you really don't know what they are into. Right, what they thinking, yeah, I mean, what they what, what they uh-huh. exactly. exactly, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So they may be totally. It, it, it's it's people. That's why it's always people. It's somebody in your circle who really don't like you. That's why it's always good to keep your circle super small. And even then, if if, if, if it's a circle of four, one person, I guarantee you, has some real animosity towards you. It may not show it. Because they may not be in a position to, to pounce on it, but that's I guarantee you. Right. I don't I don't care who it is, man. I'm, t- I'm trying to tell you, it's somebody, it's somebody. That's why I deal with each person accordingly. I try not to have a circle. You feel me? I know who's. I just try to deal with each person accordingly because you know somebody somewhere because you said something because you feel some type of way about something. They have an issue Amen. that they're not going to say. They're not going to say it. Until they get a chance, until they see you in a weakened position, you feel mm-hmm. me? Until they see you in a weakened position, like I'm telling you, I, I I've never seen, you know, I until had I got admit, sick. So I that first hand. Facts. Until I got sick or or went through some financial issues before, I never knew who was who. Like them hard mm-hmm. times will reveal who is who. When life humbles you, it will reveal who is who. You know what I mean? And in conversations will reveal who is who. And to those who don't want to be revealed, I advise you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you feel me? Because I'm listening. I'm listening to everything right. somebody said. I'm listening. Right. You feel me? <laughs> I'm I'll listening. tell you there. That's for sure. That's you got to listen sure. to, or, or you also got to listen to, 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 to what they don't say. Exactly. And that's even, that's even, I learned that the point. hard way. I had somebody <laughs> yeah. harbor so much feelings, negative feelings towards me, and then it came out on some old random, and I was just like, wow. Right. Tell me how you right. really feel. Like you said, that's your job when you know, Trayvon Martin. Think about stuff that go on in the neighborhood. Think about when, you know, like when, you, when we, if you're having a conversation around somebody or around people, y'all having a group discussion, or say just, uh, random molestation come up or uh you're talking about child abuse or something like that. See who 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 who, who fired it. See who more so nonchalant. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like that 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 don't get to you, bro? That don't get to <laughs> right. you, sis. You feel me? You don't feel some type of way about that, sis? Why not? Right. right. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll keep an eye yeah. on you. You feel me? Right. <laughs> we keep an eye on you, cause now, yeah. I mean, and, and that's, like you said, that's that that that's 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 definitely when you when you know they either they either contemplating or they are they are, are they are they thinking about what what what's the best thing to say at this moment? They can't figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They never lie. You know, never I mean, lie. I, yeah, I mean, you know, I think I, I, I mean some things are easy to, to respond to. You know, and for me, I'm like, you know, if, I, if I'm hearing that somebody's going through something like that, I'm you know, I already know. I feel about it, and I'm saying some, you know, there's you know, there's some subjects that you know pe- people bring up, and you'd be like, hmm, you know what? I rather than I say because <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna be mad at me, you know. I mean, you know, it's, it's some, some sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, you know. Sometimes it's easy to be like, you know, it's easier for me just to step back and just let them let them battle that out. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, and that's a, and it's back because you gotta you say you gotta listen to what they say, what they don't say, the body language, all that. Like people tell me right. stuff, whether they realize it or not. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I mean, I like, like like Clint mentioned. 
Like 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 Clint mentioned earlier, you know, I just I just rather people be honest with me. If you feel this kind of way, you feel this kind of way. You know, it's up to me now to make a decision on if I want to keep rocking with you or understand you or whatever the case may be. You know, I mean, it's 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 easier it's easier to be truthful than to try to be deceptive or to try to cover things up. You know what I mean? So I say take the easy route out. Be 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 honest. You know, be up. You know, straightforward. You know, be able to be able to. I always like I always tell my kids, be able to back up what you do by your own, you know, by by your own uh, um, beliefs or by your belief system to say, hey, this is how I feel about it, and this is, and, you know, and, and and either ain't nobody changing my mind about it, or or you're gonna have to sway me to make me change my mind. But at this point exactly. in my life, I stand by this decision. I stand stand by this action. Or I stand by this choice. You know, and be able to and be able to stand by it. You know, because you can't stand by a choice you're making or action you're taking, then don't do it. Don't say it and don't believe it. You know, and that's I mean, there's certain things I feel about that, and 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 so I I've stepped away from certain things, certain people, certain situations where it's like, you know, what I can't stand by this. You know, and I can't back up, back it up later on either, and be able to and be able to feel good about it. You know, I can't sit here and be like, oh, you know what. I rocked with them because that's how I believe, and if because I didn't, so now I'm like, you know what? I, I can't mess with them, or I can't deal with this situation. I'm not about to deal with this. I'm just gonna do something different. Facts. Uh, we got a couple minutes left. Also, want to add on: be aware of those who always agree with you. You feel me? Oh, uh, you ain't never lie. Like, True like that. somebody always. <laughs> they they have somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, like you feel me. You the, the person you love the most is who you. The people, I keep saying the person, the people you love the most, you are not always going to agree with. Exactly. You feel me? Right. So, so if you're around somebody, somebody around you, and you know, every time y'all get in a discussion, they yeah. always a hundred percent on your side and agree with everything you're saying. That shit phone. <laughs> that shit is a hell of phone. You feel me? Even on this. On, on our podcast, we disagree on things all the time or look at things differently all the time from each other. So, yeah. you feel me? It's, it's, you know what I mean? We may agree on a... I ain't saying y'all won't agree on a lot of stuff, but if y'all agree on everything, uh-uh. <laughs> can't, <laughs> can't, can't, can't be real. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what's, know what's crazy, Clint, before we even end this show? Like this past week, I swear for God, I done, I done did some messed up stuff. Not even messed up. I done did some stuff that wasn't necessarily correct or right or valid to do. And when I tell you I got called out, I got called out about it, pulled to the carpet and told about myself. And I was like, no, that was fucked up. And I, but I, I said that person, do you understand the magnitude of how, like, it hurt like hell to, hell to hear that shit. And I actually got a pod cool. A, a, a podcast, a blog, and waiting to post this by the end of this week, probably post it tomorrow, mm -hmm. about how when somebody pulls the mirror up to your face and show you your true self, and nobody has done that. Yeah. Nobody else has had the gall to do it. That's somebody that actually gives a fuck about you. And that's and it feel kind of good after when, once you get over the. Uneasiness yeah, of it. I, I did. That shit I, I got good. over it. I got to make some amends <laughs> everywhere else. And then my mm. sister actually told me, like, you know, you fucked up. That she actually did it, and it was funny because I didn't even tell her I got called to the call to the carpet with the mirror in my face. And I was like, you don't really? understand because it's like I know that everything I do is not 100 percent correct. But got like to not have somebody call me call me out on it, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. We got like ninety seconds left. It's yeah, that. but let's wrap the show. Give out give out your information. You already know. Uh Kingstruth dot com is the blog. At E Trenton Groomy is the Twitter. King's Truth six oh nine is the Instagram. It's your boy Willie Styles. Get at me at Willie Styles everywhere. And that's T Y L E Z. Willie Styles dot info for all my links. Stylesradio dot com for all my music. And of course, it's your girl, I am Sunny, Insta, um, underscore D, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Check my blog, um Check out our, our website, GFTRadioShow.com, Instagram, and um, 
Twitter at Radio. Yeah, MerchNiceTeespring.com forward slash store forward slash GFT Radio. Facebook page, y'all got to like that shit. Um, <laughs> like it. Love um, it. SoundCloud, like it. Love iTunes, it. <laughs> Google Play Music. Like, y'all know where to get us. Right. See y'all on Y'all for joining me.